short papers. Section 10. Atonement. By Charles Henry Mackintosh. Better known as C.H.M. The testimony of Holy Scripture is clear, explicit and abundant as to the grand cardinal truth that atonement is by the shedding of blood. The coats of skin which the Lord God made for Adam and Eve were procured from dead victims. The more excellent sacrifice of Abel consisted of blood and fat. So also in the history of Noah in Genesis 8 and in the history of Abraham in Genesis 15. Israel was screened from judgment in Egypt by the blood of the Paschal Lamb, as we read, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Exodus 12. The whole book of Leviticus is one great stream tending to swell the tide of evidence on this vital question. The burnt offering, peace offering, sin offering and trespass offering were all based on blood shedding. See also that famous passage in Leviticus 17. The life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Verse 11. Time fails us to bring forward the thousandth part of the scripture proofs on this subject. We shall merely give two most pointed passages from the New Testament and then leave you to follow out the chain of evidence for yourself. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Hebrews 9 verse 22. Unto him, that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, Revelation 1 verses 5 and 9 with Acts 20 verse 28. These passages speak for themselves. We desire to bow in reverent submission to the authority of Holy Scripture. We do not want to reason or argue. Thus says the Lord is amply sufficient for us. Your question as to John 1 verse 29 and 1 John 2 verse 2 is a very important one. It will help you much to distinguish between Christ as the propitiation for the whole world and as the substitute for his people. The two goats in Leviticus 16 typify him in these two aspects of his work. The Lord's lot fell upon one. This was Christ the propitiation. The people's lot fell upon the other. This was Christ the substitute. John 1 verse 29 refers to the former. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. See also Hebrews 9 verse 26. Christ did a work on the cross in virtue of which every trace of sin shall yet be obliterated from the whole creation. The full result of this work will not be seen until the new heavens and the new earth shall shine forth as the eternal abode of righteousness. It is in virtue of Christ's propitiatory work that God has been dealing in mercy and goodness with the world and with man from the fall down to the present moment. He has sent his sunshine and his rain upon the earth. He has filled men's hearts with food and gladness. He has been dealing in patience and long-suffering with the human family. And it is in virtue of the same propitiatory sacrifice that the evangelist goes forth with a worldwide gospel for the ears of every creature under heaven. The evangelist cannot go and tell every creature that Christ died as his substitute, but he can tell him that he died as a propitiation, and when, through grace, the soul believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, he can learn the further calming truth that he died as a substitute and bore all his sins in his own body on the tree. See Hebrews 9 verse 28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, all his people. In verse 26 we read, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Christ is never said to have borne the sins of the world. It is utterly false doctrine, it is universalism. He bore the sins of his people, and he has done a work in virtue of which every trace of sin shall yet be abolished throughout the wide universe of God. These distinctions, dear friend, are of the utmost importance. Scripture maintains them. Theology confounds them, and confounds souls as a result. 1 Peter 2 verse 24 refers to the whole of Christ's sacrificial work. It is a quotation from Isaiah 53. The Septuagint version renders the word strike by a singular noun. The atoning work of Christ is set forth in various ways throughout Scripture, death, blood shedding, stripes, cross, etc. There is always a distinct object in the use of any particular term. Accept, beloved friend, our warmest thanks for your truly kind and encouraging letter. May God bless you most abundantly.